Good morning. Uh, this is Freddie Gillespie, Chair of the Open Space Preservation Commission. We have a quorum. We're going to begin our meeting after I read the um, governor's statement. So, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GL 30A, Section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Southboro Open Space Preservation Commission will be conducted via remote, participa remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of Southboro's website at www.southboroughtown.com. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch or participate in the meeting may do so in the following manner, by finding the meeting at www.southboro.com, remote meetings, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access their proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on Southboro's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. So I'm going to Call the meeting to order at 1136, having a quorum. And the first thing on our agenda is minutes. Um, let me just say, um, the minutes are the first thing. Karen, can you put those up? Do you have the ability to share the screen? Um, I read them a while ago, but I need to refresh my memory yeah, on them. What I have up right now are the minutes from June 14th. Can you guys see them? Yeah, can you make them a little bigger? Sure. How's that? Um, these are, we approved all these older minutes that were outstanding. Yep, can you yeah, scroll down a little? Yeah, up to date. So this is the, this is just the minutes from the last meeting that we haven't done yet. Yep, can you scroll down a little? Sure. Um, I noticed also, Freddie, just in case you don't have visibility to this, that Janet Maney, who we- Yeah, I know that. Thank you. Is our is a panelist. Yeah, so not a panelist, an attendee. I'm sorry, an attendee. Sorry, an attendee. Yeah. I, I have concern what does expressed mean on that bullet. Which Panelists way? agreed to this document should it say agreed or something? Janet Maney expressed this. Doesn't make sense to me. The panelists agreed to the document so far, the document that you presented. Right. And Janet Maney and Margaret, they, they, um, they, they maybe say agreed because expressed. Agreed the same. Okay. Yeah, that sounds better. Sure. Same with Janet Maney. Change that to agreed. Um, I knew what you meant, but. Yeah. It just sounds a little clear. funny. It's more clear, yeah. Um, scroll down. Oh, we didn't go over that. Um, oh, this meeting was on the 14th, right? So mm -hmm. the Becology Research Garden dedication and tour. Mm -hmm. That probably should say um, we had a hugely successful event with like over 50 people attending. So amazing. I'm sorry, but where in the minutes was that referred to? Breakneck Hill. Uh... So this page you're on right now. Oh, I see. It says no. Breakneck Hill. Yeah. See, Becology Research Garden and Dedication and yeah. Tour. Discussed updates. I think it should. No, above it. Research Garden dedication and tour, June thirteenth. See it? Go right above where you are. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of discussed updates, um, I would say reviewed 
we re I, I certainly gave you an update on the tour that we had over 50 people attend, or we had about 50 people attending. I wouldn't say over, but 50 would be good. And Dr. G. Gear presented, and it was a huge success. I always get his name spelled wrong. G E. We should all know this. G E G E A R. So there's a G E G. G E G. E A R. So we just replace the R with a G. Great. So you got two E's in there now. Sorry. Um, I think we, um, St. Mark's School in Town Pond, we pound, um, I think we tabled those for another time. I don't know yeah, if we, we did anything. Talk about them. So did we. Do you want me to add a bullet that says tables? Ta it? Yeah, we tabled till another time. Well, not a bullet, but next to it, next to both St. Mark's School and, or just take it out because we don't have to, you know what, just take both St. Mark's in town. Yeah, take those out. Okay. okay. All right. So that's good for me. Sarah, do you have any edits? No edits from me. Okay. Is there a motion to accept these minutes? Monday, I'll June 14th. A, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes from June 14th, 2021. Is there a second? Um, Karen Svikovich seconds the minutes. Okay, all in favor, Karen? Karen Svikovich in favor. Sarah? Sarah Sotano in favor. Freddie Gillespie in favor. So those pass unanimously. All right. So now, um, The next thing on our agenda is signature authorization. And I wanna be sure to get this right. So I'm just going to um, read what we need to do from an email I got. It went to my wrong email account. Um, I know it gets confusing, which is why we didn't do it before, but um, because I, can't use my town email account for my CPC work. And that confuses everyone. So I get Open Space Commission email sent to my CPC email and I miss this. So um, their update, I'm gonna read this. We are from the town accountant. We are updating our signature records for the fiscal year 21 audit ending 6 30, 2021. Please vote the authorized signer and alternatives, if any, at your next meeting and have each member sign the attached form. She wanted that, um, she wanted us to return the original signed form and a copy of the minutes to the accounting office by 7 1. So, um, we're going to be late with that, obviously, and I'll have to drive around to bring the form to you to be signed, but we can take the vote. And I guess the vote should be, as always, I have been the authorized signer as the chair. Do we want an alternate? If something happened to me and I broke my hand and couldn't sign or whatever, right? Do we want to have someone else have the ability to sign off on invoices? We don't do it that often. We've not done it in the past, but what do you think? Should we do that to be on the safe side? In general, or as it relates to the uh, new garden we're building in the library? We don't have the ability to sign off on anything for the new garden. So that's not the issue. The issue is on our annual budget. Um, 2021 um, has all been taken care of by 630 by me. So that's not the issue, but moving forward, it becomes uh, we'll need a form signed for fiscal 2022 as well, if you want. So for 630, it was me. It doesn't need to be any different because that's all over right now. 
I'm sorry, 630. I mean, 620, fiscal year 21. Do you have an opinion or do you just want to keep on going with just keeping it me? I feel like it's worked out fine with it just being you, but is what's typical in other committees? Do they typically have a second person? They typically have more people than we do. Mm. You have a bigger problem if I can't be the signer because then you don't have a quorum. You don't even have a quorum. So I'm, I'm fine with it being just you, but what do you think, Sarah? Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have a second. I don't necessarily have, feel strongly either way at all. Whatever um, you think. Well, I mean, why don't we have a motion that for fiscal year 2021, Freddie Gillespie was your official, the chair was your official signer. Why don't we take that first, okay? If somebody wants to make that motion. That's what it was. I guess we just have to take a vote. Maybe because of COVID, we didn't do this last year. Okay. So somebody want to make that motion for fiscal year 2021? Um, I can make a motion that for fiscal year 2021, Freddie Gillespie be the authorized signer. Is there a second? Yes, I, Sarah Rostano seconds that motion. Okay. And anyone in favor? Karen? Karen Spicuch in favor. Sarah Rostano in favor. Freddie Gillespie in favor. I have to go on mute for one minute. Let's hope that was muted. Um, I'm back. So now let's vote on fiscal year 2022. Um, would Sarah or Karen like to be the alternate just to have it on the records in case? Nobody's jumping up. I, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, if it would be useful, I'm happy to be, I'm happy to be a second center. Is that all right with you, Sarah? Yeah. All right. So the motion would be to have for, for fiscal year 2022 to have Freddie Gillespie be the authorized signer and Karen Savicevich to be the alternate. And can you make somebody want to make that motion? Maybe if you make it, Sarah, since I'm not. I can try. <laughs> Uh, for 2022, Freddie Gillespie will be the primary, is it primary signer? Mm -hmm. And Karen Spitkovich would be the alternate signer. And I second that motion. Um, call it the authorized. Can you amend that to say the authorized signer? How about if I say, because I'm reading it, and then you just say so moved, right? Mm -hmm. So that for Fisk, this is what you would write down, Karen, because we have to get a copy of this and send it to them as well right away when I bring it. For fiscal year 2022, Freddie Gillespie will be the authorized signer. Full name is Frederica Gillespie. So let me start over. For fiscal year 2022, Frederica Gillespie will be the authorized signer for the Open Space Preservation Commission and Karen Savicevich will be the alternate. Is that, you got that, Karen? Yep, got it. So, so moved. So moved. Is there a sec, and that was Sarah, is there a second? That would um, be you, Karen. Karen. The motion. Okay, and then all in favor, Karen? Karen Svikovich in favor. Sarah? Sarah Rossitano in favor. Freddie Gillespie in favor. All right, I'll, what I'll need you to do is at the end of the day, Karen, is to write up the minutes or this portion of it, I guess, and um, I will submit it with the form when I drive around to get your signatures, okay? Sounds good. All right, I hope that takes care of it. Um, Back to the agenda is our native pollinator native plant initiative. 
I like to keep all of these together under here. So right now we're working on um, our big thrust is pollination preservation gardens and pollination preservation habitat. So for the library pollination preservation garden, I'm going to have um, Sarah give an update on where we stand right now, and then we can discuss it. And we do know that right. Janet Maney, who is a library trustee, is in the audience. Is there anyone else in the audience? Let me see participants five. Um, I don't even see, oh, attendees. One. Yeah, I got it, great. We'll be done with Zoom by the time I figure out how to use everything. Anyhow. So the library, um, some spaces for the initial garden planting have been, sod has been removed and we um, saw that when once this, once the top level was removed, there was not enough, not, it wasn't perfect for planting. So we needed to add some topsoil. So that should be, we've been working with the DPW and they should be delivering that and spreading the topsoil by the end of the week. They said by, by Friday, the latest, I believe. Um, and then um, once that's done, and I think they're going to be moving some large, I'd say small boulders or very large rocks um, back into the little gully that we have there. And once that's done, we should be able to get started on planting. Thank you, Sarah. Um, do you know, so I was there yesterday. I had a crew from, uh, somehow you guys are, my screen disappeared. iTunes came up. Okay. Um, the I was there yesterday with a crew of volunteers from the um, AMSA, Advanced Math and Science. I forget what they the call is. it. AMSA. AMSA. The AMSA is the private school. Yes. Well, it's a charter school, so I don't know that it's quite private, but. It's a charter school in Marlborough, and um, I brought, you know, through the regional group, they asked to help out, and so I got them on board to help plant the library, but um, to keep them engaged, because they need volunteer hours, because we weren't ready. Uh, we've been weeding up at Breakneck Hill, and yesterday they came and removed the what have been referred to as the potatoes mm -hmm. from the dirt. They're potato sized rocks. They actually remove some bigger ones as well. So when I was there with them yesterday, I noticed that, so we have the two stone walls that created the, um, I want, want to call it a, um, maybe a stormwater control gully. It, it was too, it was a channel created by the two stone walls that led to a um, storm drain. It's a little odd because it kind of went uphill to get to the storm drain, but, and that was where I also had um, a stormwater expert advise us that it would be beneficial even to plant in there. I was curious if we could, and he said yes, and that similar to a rain garden, they would absorb water and help infiltrate it and not do anything to block the flow of water but like i said the flow would be going uphill so you'd really need a really high volume of water to reach the storm drain so the plants would be even more beneficial because they would infiltrate some of the water but there was a stone wall on the other side if you can picture the i don't have a picture here if you can picture the garden area there's a opening that goes up a little incline to where the storybook area is of the and of the library um, and there's a stone wall on the other side and some invasive shrubs were taken down there and that stone wall is also um, degraded with the stones on the ground and we were planning to put maybe some 
shrubs there eventually or some planting, but you still would want that stone wall. So Sarah, when you're communicating with the DPW, is that something you can mention as well? Can you explain? Explain? Um, oh. If you're- It was, it went to the, to the side. If you're, right. if you're facing, I'm trying to picture this, if you're in the middle of the whole area, right? Mm -hmm. And the new garden planting is on your left and you're mm -hmm. facing the library, right? Mm -hmm. And you're in the middle, you know, where on the right is an area a little further back from the, um, the garden planting is where we have the lawn alternative clearing. Mm -hmm. In front of that is, I can send you a picture, which is worth a thousand words. I just don't have it on my computer. Um, there's another stone wall. So there's a stone wall that, how about this? There's a stone wall that borders the cemetery. Yep. And then it comes out and makes a corner into the garden area, right? Mm -hmm. And there were some invasives on that stone wall growing. And um, I think when they took those invasives out, yeah, that wall collapsed as well. Okay. It's not as bad as the um, the other side. Um, actually, if I if I send this picture to you, Karen, can you get it on the screen? Sure. Probably not. Yeah, I can do that. If you email it to me, I can um, I can display the picture. All right. So because this is important so that we all know what we're on the same page. Um, can't, so let me see. Um, so there's the, Just send it to my, either my town email or my Missouri. I'll send it to your town because I can be sure that's the right one. Sorry to say that, but I keep always grabbing the wrong one. I don't have it yet, but sometimes pictures it's take coming. It's coming. Okay. Yeah. It needed to load. So that's one. Um, and I'm going to send a second one, but as soon as you get that, let me know. So the good news is that we collected quite a lot of rocks and we didn't want them to be in the way of any restoration over there. So we put them over by the lawn alternative because we're not sure, you never know when you need a rock. I, I don't know that we necessarily, um, want to use them. But then another thing that became um, evident was, not evident, but a, a thought occurred. We've seen people who use rocks to paint them and then write write the name of the plant on the rock. So the rocks become a garden uh, marker. And we thought potentially in the future, there were some really nice ones that had a flat face that could you know, work well for that. We could, um, you know, if we save those rocks, it could potentially, if we either with volunteers or the library in the future wanted to offer a project, um, to actually have that be a craft type project or we could make it like look up the plants and know the plants and then put the name on. However, it's something for the future, not right away, but it, it's something that um, Joyce Greenleaf has done in her garden. She's the chair of the- You did a great garden. job of that. I really like the way she used the rocks, yeah. Well, there's a, somebody else copied it and he's from Northboro, this guy, Gary, and it's his look really great. So it just seems like, you know, if it's catching on, it's a nice way of doing it. Um, although we don't particularly care for the, 
the new fad of painting rocks and putting them in places. That's the stewardship committee, our commission and the library certainly could decide different, but it, it sort of takes away from the whole nature based um, theme. So did you get that yet, Karen? We did. Okay. Trying to make it bigger. There we go. Can you see it? Yeah. So what happened here is if you, Karen, can you put your cursor in the middle? And I'll tell you when you're in the middle. Right there. Now go straight back towards the parking lot down the middle. Can you see that there's two stone walls collapsed all the way down? Mm -hmm. Keep going. And in the keep going right there. That's a stone wall. And at the base of that on the ground is a grate. So put your cursor yes. down just a little bit. So that's where the grate is on the ground there. And there were two solid stone walls on both sides. On the left and the right. On the left and the right. And it created- Like train a, tracks coming towards us, yeah. Yeah, and it, and it actually, see where the final stone is um, on the left? Mm -hmm. That actually extended down almost um, to match where the final stone is on the right. And when I was there yesterday, my concern was that if they don't build it back out, if we get a lot of, obviously it was put there because in some storm event, water must flow or one would think it does um, or else they wouldn't have gone to all that trouble to build it, that it creates, instead of having a directed channel, it creates a whole wider area. And when I was looking at it, um, if that area in front of that last, last rock on the left, which is now sort of flat, it used to be, I, I don't know how to describe it, but can you see, I wish I had the pointer. Karen, can you see the, there's a little, if you come to the very bottom of the picture on the left, there's a rock right up above it. See, see this whole area moving towards the stone walls that aren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. That was lower and it, the whole garden area sort of went up from there, but now it's more flat straight across, which means that area is more prone to being staying wet. It's not draining down into that area. It used to be sort of going uphill, which means we have to plan to put in different plants that may stay. That soil was, you know, we just had a lot of rain, but the soil right adjacent to there because it um, stayed maybe stayed wetter because it wasn't flowing down so it sort of went uphill on the left from that rock down by the front the small little rock so that stone wall came all the way down and then behind it it was sort of going up a hill up. so depending on how the depending how it gets regraded, we may have to rethink the plants we were planning to put there. Because one of the thoughts had been to put some plants that like it a little bit drier on the other side of the stone wall. But so we, I'm just saying that we don't have an expectation it will be rebuilt the exact same way, but it will impact what we can plant where, if, if you can understand that. Okay. All right. So, um, let me see. I'm trying to send you one more picture, okay, so that Sarah understands. Um, so in, the, in this case, Freddie and anyone else who has an opinion on this, I know we're supposed to include in the minutes supporting documents. Can I just copy paste this picture as a second page of the minutes? Yeah. Um, because it feels like that makes the most sense, you know, versus like. So yes. I'll just call it Exhibit A. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to give you, you're going to get a few more exhibits. Just so you know, if you could send it to my Mosaic Global Solutions address, ready? Because it takes a really long time to get through to the town email one, and then I have to forward it to Mosaic to display it on my screen as well. All right, let me. 
um, Mosaic Global Solutions. I just sent it with empty subject. I'm not sure it might be multiple of the same picture. Let me know if you get it. Not so far not. Takes a while sometimes to load. For some reason, it doesn't want to Did it come yet. No, it still doesn't come. And also, it's not letting me copy and paste the. Well, don't worry about it. I'll send you a did. I'll send you a um. A file, and we just attach. Send the file in as an attachment. Okay. Okay, that sounds fine. Uh, just remind let me. Go me. back. Yeah, it still hasn't. Oh, there we go. It came. All right, so. I don't know that that's. Can you see this now? I think I'm still sharing. No, I'm seeing your email screen. All right. How about now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you look on the left, that's the garden area, right? And then on the right, is another area we talked about um, putting some shrubs in and maybe a tree in the middle. So the reason for all of our plantings are to create a full season of nectar and pollen from March to October for at-risk pollinators. And to do so, you need some shrubs and trees, and we're not putting the shrubs and trees in the, the flower garden area. So on the right-hand side, um, that had invasive species. Um, they tend to self-sow, and they get into the stone walls, and then they deteriorate the stone walls. So those were taken out, which was wonderful. But that also caused that stone wall to collapse. And I don't know, if can you enlarge that, Karen? Maybe not. No, it's, it's the full it's the full size of my screen right now. But if you go to views and do the drop down, you can enlarge it on your computer. Yeah, I was just trying to make it so. Um, on the right hand side, that was a solid stone wall, like you see, you know, all across New England. And now, can you see that those stones are displaced? Uh, yeah. Okay. And then in the front right hand lower corner. That is just a tip of the edge of the lawn uh, alternative area. So, Sarah, just ask if when they're replacing the stones on the stone wall on the left, if they, the two stone walls, if they can do the one on the, on the right as well. Okay. So that's three stone walls that have been uh, kind of crashed and tumbled. Do you want me to show so, the picture as well, Freddie? Show what? The second picture you sent me? Yeah, I don't know what it is. It didn't look like, I thought I had sent quite a few, so. Let's see. Make sure it's of the, uh, of the library grounds. If it's not, don't post. <laughs> you never know what it might be. Um, I did a presentation once and all of a sudden some it is of the library grounds. came up. It was like, oh my God. All right, so let's see. So that, that, left hand there it is. bed where they oh it's my oh, that's close the right up. that's the one on the right yeah that's the one on the right so that was a solid stone wall behind it and now it's not that's because of yeah thin faces i am able that's, to do screenshots of these so i'm able to include it in the minutes so you don't have to just send a separate file already so the issue so, is to stack that one, but the one on the left side, it yeah. not only came to, um, you know how there was that, there's that, see the green grass pathway up through the two stone walls. Can you, can you go to the other picture, Karen? Is that possible? Uh, the, 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 one, the, one that, the one that, the very first one that you sent me? 
or the middle one? Either, either, either one. Anyone Sorry? that chose the, the one that chose the middle ground. This one here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. so that stone wall went from that bush over to where the, the little grassy pass through is up to the hill. Yeah. And then I believe it turned and came towards us a little bit. And that's what held the dirt in. And it, it was probably about a foot higher, that bed. Yep. And I didn't realize that until you just were saying it. So, so this can you was show the more... other close up one, Karen? Let's see. So those rocks were removed. The one and I maybe told those you. are the, the ones on the hill. Up. Oh, so they actually took them out from in front They're not there? even there anymore. There was just a little, I'll have to look and see if I have. I have pictures. I can, I can find them and send them to you. It really, when I, when we looked at it and we were discussing it, it looked like it sort of had this channel that then came out almost in a, like a flare sort of. Yeah. Yeah. And that flare area, what we were discussing in the design thing is that the base of it, it would almost be like a river of flowers coming out and then spreading out. And then it went up above it to the upper area that was. Oh, I'm looking at a, I have a picture right now. So it was, oh, I guess there was, it was, they were kind of covered in grass, but there was they were a there. rock wall under there. Yeah. They were, there was, so it went from, just pretend they were like three stones high. And then at the, at the edge in the front on the, this one side, they were one stone high, half submerged in the soil. Oh, actually I'm emailing it to Karen right now. Okay. For some reason I'm, I'm not able to um, see my Zoom anymore. Let me see. I'm trying to get back, get it back up again. It's like the window closed or something. And I, obviously oh, we will- We lost her. The, did Karen- Yeah, she'll be crash? back. She's there back. She you're, you're not connect, you're muted. You sent me something by email or either that or you can just share your screen there. You've got it up. Well, it was on my phone. It's not on my computer. So, it, so I emailed it Global solution. to your, I did, to your. Okay. You're a tech gal there, Karen. Gosh, I'm really not. You guys are just. Well, you're, obviously, you're better than what we want to attempt. Um, so I let suppose me we could it. email it to ourselves. Now, there's Sarah. Got it. Okay. I guess I could have emailed it to my phone. Yeah. All right. So let me see now. Then you'd have to share your share screen. it. I don't think that that. And we'd rather yes, that's now you see it. So it's, this isn't complete because you can't see to the left, but it, it there are out, rocks. So it, it came out and it created this nice little um, and it doesn't quite look the way it what I'm describing, but mm -hmm. if you can picture flowers coming down from in the middle of the gully, right? Mm -hmm. And then spreading out and it would be a lower, you know, taller flowers in the back, but um, so it's the- it's a waterfall it, of flowers. Th thank oh, you. That was, the, <laughs> that was the thought or a river of flowers, a stream yeah. of flowers. And you know, maybe it wouldn't have looked that way once it was executed, but it's it would have given it some definition. If it can't be, if you see these rocks that the soil goes uphill there mm -hmm. from, and it's kind of flat in front of them, the way the soil is right now is all flat from about um, on the left-hand side, there's a big flat stone. So it's, it's really pretty flat and then I'm sure if they bring the soil in, it will be graded up a bit, but like Sarah said, I don't know how you would hold the, the soil in on that side. So 
whatever, you know, and we will, we will um, certainly, I will contact. adapt to whatever we end up with, but, you know, those considerations are of um, a concern because it does change the plant composition, I think. Um, what we would plant. In I'll the keep in room. touch with DPW and see if, I mean, I can always send them pictures, but I can also see if I can, um, I could meet them there when they start just to. Yeah, I'd like to know that as well, person. Sarah. I'm yeah. not sure I'll be around, but you know, if you can get them to tell us when they're going to be there. Um, and the other thing, when you looked at the um, the picture with the grass, the, the full the full view across, can you put that one back up, Karen? Is that the first one? Picture with a full view across. It shows both stone walls on both sides of the opening up to the okay, story the walk. First, uh, this one. It's more of a panoramic view. Not that it's panoramic, but. This one? Yeah. I just wanted to point out how really nice it is. You have that story walk up above, but oh. that leads sort of an entrance down to this area that, mm -hmm. um, you know, it really will make this an attractive. Um, it's gonna be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Place to, to come to, I think. Inviting is what I'm trying to say. Um, people, the, the storybook on the left is your last one far left do you see it mm -hmm. um, in front of the shrub so right here. Yeah. but you would have walked by and as you're walking over there I'm sure you you know our plan is also to have it be attractive the view when you when we're planning the design here which keeps changing a little bit um, is the view will be attractive from where we're standing looking at this picture straight on but the reality is a lot of people are going to be seeing from up on that story walk so we want that view to be attractive and I mean you want all views to be attractive but you know it's not like you just have one place you're going to be looking also people will be parking their cars and looking at it from their from the the uh, parking lot so this truly is a um, four-sided garden design with um, a lot of considerations there and the fact that we're limited I shouldn't say limited, but we are, um, we have a plant palette that's defined by Dr. G. Deere's plant list and putting those together, which have different types of soil conditions and um, most of them are full sun. So that's great. Um, so it's very exciting and the possibilities are really, really um, fun. We also will have to measure it again because before we spray painted it, we, I had gone out with Ellen Souza. We had staked it with flags that somehow got mowed down. So when we went back to spray paint, it was a guesstimate. So I'm not sure that the dimensions are exactly the same. So I think we're going to try to measure it now and see, you know, because that will change the plant numbers potentially a little bit. Is there any... Um, talked about the volunteers oh the next thing we also have to do Sarah is um, well I have these you know trying to trying to get volunteers in the middle of July is going to be challenging and it was a little mini miracle that I got these students um, their school is closed, the club is over, they're in a climate change club, but they wanted to still do the projects over the summer. So we're very fortunate that they've stepped up. But we also, part of the goal of this project, like it's wonderful, we have these students, but part of the project is to get Southboro volunteers and to create a volunteer core um, that are connected 
with an interest in the library or, you know, to create, it's going to cre need an ongoing uh, group so that watering and weeding next year. And eventually, um, you know, we probably shouldn't need any water unless we're in a drought. The Becology Research Garden we, we planted last year, we had a water, I mean, it was a drought. It was, um, there were small, tiny plants, seedlings, not even plugs, seedlings. A lot of them had been grown from the winter. So we managed to keep them alive. And then this year, I know we just had a lot of rain, but even in that really, really hot, hot, hot weather, we were only watering the plants we're storing there for the library. We didn't have to water any of the um, of the plants, even small plants that had been planted last year. So that's pretty um, good indicator that we shouldn't have to be spending a lot of time watering this plant in the future, which is one of the reasons for planting native plants anyhow, as we're um, hearing that we're going to be ending in, entering into a period of more droughts and water restrictions. So this is going to be not a water intensive garden. Um, so back to we need the to next step is we need to start looking. What? And we need to start reaching out. Yeah, I was thinking um, one of our goals was originally back in April was we were going to use, um, you know, do outreach for Southboro volunteers through my Southboro social media and the library. So if I draft an announcement this week, it's kind of hard because we don't know when the exact date is. Um, mm -hmm because we hopefully will be planting next week. Um, mm -hmm. But until the DPW does their stuff, we're not sure, right? So, I mean, there might be some heavy rains, who knows what, you know, I know that with landscaping and there's always something that can come up. My, what I was telling the young women that were volunteering yesterday is, you know, the key term is pivot. When you're doing these kind of projects, you have to learn how to pivot, right? So that when you get faced with something, you you know you pivot and just keep on making it move forward. So um, I think the best thing would be is to ask people to sign up to be volunteers, and that we will send them an email as soon as we know the exact date. And if they can't make the first date, they could make the second date or a future event, and just share their interest. So that would be through my Southboro. Um, the library, you need to work with um, your trustee liaison and mm -hmm. to see if the library- you can email can, Jane. Yeah, see if she can um, have a email go out. I get emails from the library pretty regularly. So I think that's something they do as well as put it on their website. So what I thought would be best is if I draft it and then give it to you, Sarah, and then you can send it to your chain to see if um, the library trustees or, you know, uh, Ryan, director, have any edits or suggestions they'd like changed before we go public with it. Does that, that sound like a good plan? Mm -hmm. And then if we get it out, what's today? Tuesday? Try to do that tomorrow. And if we can get it out on... Thursday, that would be great. If not, Friday, if not next week, whatever. You know, we at least have the students to start, but they only are a two hour. Oh, the other thing is it will take, uh, my understanding is I can plan on having a few volunteers from our Becology Garden and um, certainly Sarah and um, Karen, if you're around, but it's next week. I heard it will t it took someone like eight hours to put the flags in. That's the other, oh, that's another component we need is the little flags that we'll have to mark. Hopefully it won't take eight hours. It was a bigger garden, but it's not, it's, um, it took an afternoon of work anyhow. So that has to be done before the planting happens. But we don't need. We don't need, we don't want we can, volunteers for that. It's um, No, that we can just do, yeah. It's a, 
three people is good. I think she might have tried it. Um, this is Lincoln has done this method, and now everyone's copying it. It's I think I described it before. It's like paint by numbers. Mm -hmm. You put little flags in where every plant is going to go, and it has a number on it. And each species of plant has a number. So if you have ten butterfly bush, you will have, and that's number one. You will have little flags with a number one on it where every one of those plants is going. And when someone picks up. You also will have little stickers on each plant that will say number one. And if somebody doesn't know the plant, doesn't matter, they pick up the plant, it has a number one on it, and they find a flag that says number one and they plant it there. And then you leave the flag. So next year, when um, you know the plants come up and they're still small, you can see it's a plant and not a weed, and you can tell which plant it is. And it's very helpful until the gardens get it better established and we can put in some markers or the rocks we were talking about earlier does that sound like a plan so the best case scenario and i'm probably not around on monday is potentially getting the flags put in on tuesday that's also somewhat weather dependent because if it's raining heavy you don't want to be stepping on the soil and compacting it um so put the flags in and then the next day you can start planting and hopefully to plant everything in one day but it's not likely to happen in two hours that we have those students so um, we'll have to get as volunteers as you know much as we can and it may take two weeks to get them in depending on who we get for volunteers and how long it takes but at least with topsoil and the fact that we remove the potatoes um, when you're digging in the soil, it's going to be much easier to put the plants in than if you're digging into hard, hard ground dirt, right? So I think that's it. Is there anything else you have, Sarah, on your end? Oh, the hoses. Can you find out this question I have? Um, mm -hmm. I have, so to get the hoses, we want to make sure we get the right ones, the no kink. We don't know what kind of a, uh, what's that thing you call that? It, it looks like um, the storage it rolls into. I don't know anything about that. I don't know what they're called, but yeah, I know what you mean. Um, we want to make sure it's easy to use and is, you know, something that the library finds attractive enough and it's got to be stored up next to the library where there's an existing one for the um, other gardens out front but we want our own hoses so we never want to have a volunteer get there to water and have somebody else from another group watering somewhere else and they can't do it um, so we'll get you have a list there of the splitters and the length of the hose yeah right I just realized we're going to need something else because we're putting in um, the lawn alternative as well. So we're going to need another splitter and a, another soaker hose for that area for this year. Mm -hmm. So maybe you and I should meet there if you have any time this week. Yeah. Okay. We can, we can arrange that off. Um, do you have anything else? No. Sarah, I think no. that, oh, no, I didn't finish my thing. So for paying for this, <laughs> I do have an account at Russell's, which is a town account. It has no tax and it has a 10% discount because they don't do wholesale, but they gave us a 10% discount. The original one was for a CPA project and I switched it to, I think the stewardship committee. Um, I think I could go you know, the goal is not to have to get a whole new, um, go through the whole process to get a whole new account set up that can take time, but they were willing to change the name on the account so that it went. So I'm pretty sure I can change it to the library, but I don't think they're going to want to change the address because that means setting up a new account, I think. So if, if it could be made, can you find out if it can be made out to the library at what is it 17 common street that the townhouse is at 
if that would be sufficient if we needed to use that as an option. Yeah. Otherwise, did I, and we also want to price things out. Certainly we want to be, um, Russell's might be a little pricier, but we don't get any discount at Lowe's, but they might be more affordable. So, but at this point in time, we're also not in a position to be price shopping. Correct? Yeah. And I don't know who has what in inventory. Last year, everyone sold out of soaker hoses and stuff. But the last time I was there, they still had some. Maybe because everyone yeah. bought it up last year when they were stuck at home with COVID. And they don't need it again this year. I'm not sure. Just making that up. So I know is, um, we have Janet Maney. Janet, um, did you have anything you wanted to say? while you're here or we can't hear you so raise your hand do you know how to raise your hand if you want to want to be made a a um somebody has a hand up that's janet maney yep, janet's raising her hand so can somebody make her a panelist yep. and is that you karen or she she's unmuted i'm okay. unmuted can you hear me I can now. Okay, great. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, you know, Freddie, when I first talked to you about the what um, the turning over of the um, land and stuff and and stuff, when I had gone to see that, it wasn't the way it is now. Those boulders hadn't been moved and stuff. I must have been there on the first day after they did some work. So, um, but I think we've got a plan in place. It sounds really, really good. Um, and I'm looking forward to this. Okay. Do you have any any other input or everything sounds good to you? Everything I know sounds... you're not our liaison, but I know. Yeah, no. Um, everything sounds good to me. I think everybody's on board. Okay. So. Yeah, we just know we're, you know, we're sort of just trying to um, keep moving forward. Yep. And again, the term is pivot. Right. <laughs> when you when you hit something, you just you know so okay. and hopefully the stones that's another thing sarah where we put the stones that they won't be in the way we don't want them taken away right now okay i'm not necessarily a big fan of putting them around the edges but you know some of them were good to make markers and i'm not sure it's just like when you're doing this sort of work sometimes you just need a stone i don't know it's hard to explain when but um, sometimes it comes up so and we do have just so that people know there is a hay bale um, over by the lawn alternative it's wrapped in a blue tarp um, that is salt marsh hay weed free it's not easy to get a hold of and when I could get it delivered I did um, so that it is um, ready when we plant makes a good mulch around the plants because we don't we don't use mulch really um, you know the typical mulch so oh there's another topic for the committee and it's just a um, it certainly would need a conversation with the library trustees um, in looking at the full scope of the project with trees and tr not and when I say trees I'm talking about a small understory um, redbud tree the um, shrubs we'd like and those are pretty much beyond the capacity of volunteers to plant and we can't automatically assume DPW will do it for us so there could be a cost to putting them in you want them planted properly as well as the whole woodland area um, beyond the lawn alternative needs to be cleaned out. And it has, right now, the way the leaves are piled up, that has a, you know, that's a basic um, tree killing landscaping right now. It goes, you know, up two feet, three feet up the side of a trunk of a tree, which um, isn't good. but. Additionally, if you clean that out, it's a beautiful spot to put in some of the shade plants and the, um, 
what do we call them? The spring ephemerals, um, which some of these aren't on Rob's list, or I should say aren't on his list yet, but would add interest, um, you know, because part of the goal is for people to see what they could do in their own yard that looks different than how they landscape now, but that also is beautiful for a formal, more formal landscape. So to do all of that and the shrubs um, would require extra funding and depending how much we'd have to, you know, we'd have to again, come up with a plan, make sure the library was okay with it. But um, it's part of what we've already presented as the big scope. And the thought would be um, that, oh, it's on the agenda, apply for CPA funds. Um, last year I'd been, uh, earlier I'd been drafting a, a CHOAT fund grant to help because we knew it wasn't enough money um, but that didn't get submitted because we weren't sure where the project was going at the time so what I need now is the CPC application is um, going to be due sooner than we know but they will work with us to while well, we finalize it but we would need to agree that we wanted to approach consider this. How's that? So we could send in a um, a place saver almost. I don't, does that make sense? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Uh, now I know what everyone deals with with me without a camera. I can't see anyone's face and I don't know if you're rolling your eyes or you're falling asleep or what. I think I'm following you. Ready? Yeah. All right. So let me try oh, to be clear. You know, Sam is, it looks like Sam is an attendee, but he doesn't have his audio connected. I don't well, know. Well, he's not speaking right now because yeah, yeah. we don't need him to be connected right now. Okay. All right. So for this conversation amongst just the members of the Open Space Commission, do we want to move forward with considering applying for a CPA grant to add more, finish the full scope of the garden. And I'm not thinking it's a big ticket item, but we want to make sure we cover everything that's needed and we can define it and design it later, but we need to say we're going to move forward on this and then um, let the, the library know that we would be applying for the funds and what for, I'm sure. But the first place to start is the committee, the, the commission needs to decide if we want to do that or not. Are you with me? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yep. Sarah? So what's involved in applying for the grant? Like how much time and money do you think is involved in it? In applying for the grant? Yep. It always is more time than one would wish. Yep. Um, but how much money the grant would be for? Mm. It depends on, so certainly the bigger the tree, the more money it costs to buy it and plant it, the bigger the, you know, the faster the result um, with shrubs, the same thing, you know, so I have no idea. We would, we would um, price that out. I'm thinking it would be and some of it we wouldn't know until after we finish this planting because we may have funds for some of the shrubs because some of the plants are being donated through the um, efforts of the Open Space Preservation Commission already. So um, I can't tell you the dollar amount. It would be under $10,000, I imagine. I, I'm just curious because as you know, we're, we're pretty... Um spread really thin and none of us have a, a lot of time and yet it, it sounds like a great idea to get more money and be able to do more. I think we can write the application easily enough. I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with them um, having uh, created it but um, yeah I, we just need to know if we want to we want to consider you know Put a place saver in. How's that? 
Mm. And we can okay. always say, yeah, it's too much or we don't want to do it or, you know, we don't. Yeah, I'd be supportive it. of it depending on how much, how much time it is going to take. I think we should start the process. And... All right. So I think we need to have it in um, something drafted by the end of July and that we can then start pricing it. You know, I think we can use guesstimates for that draft and then we can price it out better. But again, before we submit it, we want to go and let the trustees know we were doing that. Also a requirement of the grant is to have permission of the property owner so we'd need to have the trustees sign off on it. Um, so we would be the applicant, but the trustees would need to um, give permission. And we can talk about how we want to do that later. Um, so that would be something you would, Sarah, bring to Jane as well. And I, I really yes. have no idea exactly what's needed right now because we're still, in such flux over the first phase. But if we want to do something next year, you need funding now because as you know, plants go on sale in January and sell out right away, a lot of them. And we have more nurseries starting up all over the state because um, this effort of using Dr. G. Deere's list for pollinators at risk has really taken off. I was actually at a um, Doug Tallamy talk through the Portsmouth, New Hampshire library and people in New Hampshire were talking about Doug, uh, Dr. Jagir's work. So he's not just Massachusetts anymore, even though his research is here. So um, it's, it's a really, uh, it's great to see it taking off. I have gardens right now, people have approached me. I'm working on one in Wayland. Natick, Westford, Marlboro's doing one. But I mean, it's really very exciting. What's really exciting is that hopefully Southboro will have the first um, public display pollination preservation garden at a library um, in the Commonwealth. And I, I think that's, I'm not, um, a shame to admit there's a little bit of um, pride in being a, a forerunner of a movement, you know, that, that we really have been working hard and um, I think it will be noticed, not just, you know, plus the great work it does, but we're, we'll be a great example is what I'm trying to say. So I'm really excited. About to be that. a trendsetter for something that's so important. Yeah, and the fact that we have, um, you know, Dr. G. Gear, regularly working at our conservation land and that he we had what four garden tours throughout the watershed and you know he presented at the Southboro one um it is because of the hard it's not just because you know of the land it's because of the hard work of all the volunteers that created that Becology research garden which as you visit it you know it's not set up to be a a formal display guard and like what's going to happen at the library. So um, the library really is a significant, significant um, project, both for Southboro, but regionally for people to see what can be done and also for townspeople to see what plants they could, how they could use these plants in their own home landscape. Anyhow, enough on that. Is there anything else on this topic? Um, where, do we need to take a vote to move forward with the CPA? Maybe it would be best. Here's, here's what somebody can so move. How's that? That the Open Space Preservation Commission will work on a draft application for CPA funding to move forward after getting the library trustees approval to do so. And we will define the components after the first phase is completed, hopefully next, or I shouldn't say 
phase is completed. After the planting happens, we will have a better idea of the design components. So that would read, the Open Space Preservation Commission is going to work on a draft CPA application for continuing the work at the Pollination Preservation Garden at the library to move forward with it only after getting approval from the library trustees. Is that, a, is that do you have that, Karen? As a motion. You're muted, Karen, so if you're speaking, or maybe- Open Space Commission will work on a draft of, of the CPA application for funding to work on the library garden only after receiving approval. That's where you lost me. From the library trustees. On the library garden. After receiving approval from the library trustees. Is that good? Um, but then there was also the phrase about, we will define the components after the planting happens. Do you want that in the motion? No, that doesn't need to be in the motion. That was me talking. Okay. So everyone understands. This is just a so, um, basic draft, um, an idea draft, right? So I will say so moved. I have captured the motion. Okay, is there a second? A second. All in favor, Karen? Karen Svikovic in favor. Sarah, Sarah Rossitano in favor. Freddie Gillespie in favor. That passes unanimously and that ends our library conversation unless, um, Janet, did you have anything else before we move on? Is your hand raised? Your, your uh, Janet does have her hand raised. Hi, I just had a question. What's the final deadline for the CPA grant? That's coming out. It's supposedly, it, it's gonna be announced like today or tomorrow that it's going to be like um, July 31st, but then they always work with people because no one ever has it and they haven't announced it, but I'm not in charge of making that deadline. Okay. I just, so. because, you know, the library trustees meet once a month, um, we should have it uh, be talked about this month. When is the um, next meeting? It is, uh, I think, two weeks from today. So what we could do is have after this meeting, we could go through the you know the draft minutes, and Sarah can create a little checklist of everything that maybe you should discuss oh. about this, if you can get it on your agenda. Or um, well, yeah, I think Sarah should probably talk to Jane about it. But yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. She can write it up. Okay, and then thank you. Do her communication thing. Okay. Anything else? Not for me. No, thank you. Okay. Sarah, you got that, that we're going to need to see if the... Yeah, we're going to have to okay. communicate so with them before need... their meeting. Yeah, and whether they get it on their agenda or not, who knows? It, you might yep. suggest that they have a standing item until this is done, that they might want to have any updates from you. Mm -hmm. That might be something you and Jane would work on. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But because our meetings might not happen until they um, have already set their agenda, if that makes sense. Yeah. So the other thing is that um, the trustees won't have to, it's just a concept right now. It's no, we're not asking them to approve the application. It's just, um, it's just that as we discussed at their meeting to facilitate funding all the um, plantings that we likely will require, okay? All right, next item on the agenda, if I can find it. Um, the golf course. Golf course. Yeah, okay. So golf course, we have a CPA article. Um, that 
we're doing um, invasive removal of the Japanese knotweed as well as, and that's a three year plan and as well as tree of heaven. The tree, tree of heaven recently got treated and I'm going to have to follow up the way it was broken down was um, we have to be responsible for removing the dead tree material, but the tree needs to stay up. It's kind of weird till it's dead so that it can absorb all the, um, if, you, if you cut it down, the roots just continue to grow. So it's absorbing the, the um, herbicide and then in another week or so. So I, I will have to find someone who will cut it down and take it away. And then we also need, I'll work with the library, I mean, sorry, library, the um, library on the brain, sorry. I will work with the golf course to cut, you have to cut the, the um, knotweed, it gets very tall and you cut it around now so that um, the optimal spray time or treatment time for that is in the fall, but you don't want it really tall because then what happens is you have to spray up in the air and you have a bigger, a bigger, bigger zone of um, potential trespass. So to be more specific, you want the plant lower, but it has to have enough leaf out. So you have to cut it around now so that it can grow back and be big enough to take advantage of the spray, but not be too tall. And you also don't want it spray it when it's in bloom and there are um, pollinators visiting the flowers. So and then after that that grant also had funding to replant with plants from Dr. G. Gear but until the treatment is done and they're going to still be treating with herbicide and it takes several years we don't want to be doing that okay. And then the next topic is the Halloran, I'm sorry, before I say the next topic, did anyone have a comment on that, Karen or Sarah? Mm, I don't have a comment, no. No. Okay, so the next topic was um, Halloran Open Space. So the Halloran Open Space also had a, was in the same grant, CPA grant, for the invasive removal and potential planting of Dr. G. Deere's plants. Um, the problem is we don't really have good access to the to Halloran um, that's easy enough for these contractors to come in to do the invasive treatment. They have to load up their tanks and then, you know, get to their truck and get back. Um, and the current public access is from Hubley Lane and it, it's not well defined. You're like walking up a steep hill through someone's front yard and then you're hit the Hubley open space land and you'd have to walk down a big hill to get across over to the Halloran property that um, where the treatment is supposed to occur. So we're looking for access there and um, Selectman Sam Stivers has been working with DOT. So I believe he's here if we can elevate him so he can speak so that he can give us an update on where that stands. So we know what we, you know, what, so we can plan for what we're going to do. Is there someone there that can elevate Sam to speaking? Uh, I think I can do that because I got promoted. Promote to panel. Congratulations. All right, Sam, you are promoted. Easiest promotion you're ever going to get. And Hello, can Sam. You, can you hear me OK? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yep. Great, thanks. Um, and thanks, Freddie, for keeping after me on this. I've been uh, remiss in terms of following up, but uh, good news is I actually had an opportunity over the long weekend here to go back and put together what I think is the next pass at this. Um, for folks who aren't up to speed on the history, um, last year, the, uh, our legislative delegation, uh, Carolyn Dykman and Jamie Eldridge, visited the Board of Selectmen and ask us if there were any things that uh, we were interested in getting their support for other than money. And I raised the issue of getting access to the Halloran property and uh, finding a way to get MassDOT to uh, work with us on that. 
And she did follow up with me and gave me the contact of a, an engineer there who um, uh, I corresponded with. And he sent me some plans for the layout of the land along the pike. And I think I've shared with Freddie and um, um, Melissa a first pass at a message for them. And they gave me some good feedback on that. And I now am ready to go round two on that. And so I've got one more thing I want to do later today, but my plan is Freddie to send you and Melissa another draft of that message to see um, what you think of it at this point. And I also am in the process of trying to catch up with Lisa Braccio to confirm that she's not aware of anything that the selectmen are doing elsewhere that would get in the way of this. I want to keep coordinated with whatever she's got moving in the pipeline here. I was going to touch base with Karen Galligan as well, because it's a mass dot thing. She works closely with them. But the, the good news, I think, is that if you look at the map, there is a standard 150 foot right of way width for the pike. Uh, at least the maps show that between the uh, uh, Cordeville and Parkerville roads. Where the, where the pike crosses those roads. And there is a, an additional 30 feet of that setback that goes from Parkerville um, east toward Cordoville for like, I don't know, 600 feet or something like that, that I think is related to a parcel that they acquired when they built the pike. It just happened to be laid out that way and they took the whole parcel instead of what they needed for their 150 foot right away. So there's a 30 foot bump out there that starts uh, right at Parkerville Road and uh, goes um, far enough to get into the Halloran property. And my theory is that uh, they could give us an easement to get through that 30 foot corridor without um, invading their 150 foot standard no access zone, which the engineer told me is something that's very difficult to, to overcome with them. So that would be the next ask is to um, uh, actually install a new fence to have a corridor that's 30 feet wide uh, for uh, access into the uh, sort of the, I guess the southeastern, southwestern edge of the Halloran property there. And then um, be able to, um, uh, there's a little parking on what used to be Richard's Road there on the north side of the pike. So there's some parking access and people could get in there for um, not only uh, open space use, but uh, some of the maintenance stuff that Freddie mentioned here in terms of invasives and other things. So, so that is my current thinking and um, I will get that out to folks to look at later today. And uh, assuming nobody comes up with a, a hitch in that, uh, I will pass it back to the MassDOT guy and see what they have to say. So they made no promises to me. They said, you know, we'll, we'll look at it. Uh, we think open uh, access, no access zone of 150 feet is tough to get any exception to, but they didn't comment. I didn't actually raise the bump out point with them originally because I wasn't aware of it, but uh, we'll see what they have to say about that. So I'm so, optimistic, but no guarantee. At this point. Thank you, Sam. Um, when I first started discussing this, uh, the potential for the town to purchase this property over 15 years ago, um, it was one of the issues we thought we had access off rock point road and i'll get back to that in a minute but um the fact that there is no access or currently isn't any is what actually made the price of the property so affordable because it didn't have access so that we got a property that would have sold probably for a million or more dollars for a hundred and under 200,000, I think it was 175, maybe. Um, so it's been a blessing and a curse, right? So early on, I had seen some GI, you know, as soon as we had the uh, people GIS, I had seen that area. And um, so it's been on the Open Space Preservation Commission's radar <laughs> since before the town even um, purchased it. We actually first worked with, um, it was brought to SOLF when they still thought it was worth like, you know, close to a million, hundreds of thousands more than we paid. And then when we, uh, the Open Space Commission facilitated getting the um, assessment done is when the price came up so much lower than what anyone thought it was going to be. But that access um, bump out is really clearly visible from the, uh, from the GIS. It's not perfect because some of the grading is, you know, You've got hills and slopes, but it's certainly getting over to Parkerville would be fantastic. And 
one thought is, and I don't know if they care or not, but um, the inconvenience to the town having the bridge construction just seemed like a perfect timing, maybe different categories of people, but that, um, I shouldn't say categories, departments at DOT, but, you know, we have great, living on the south side of town, it's really hard to get to the north side of town because roads close, you think a road's open and you get there and it's not open on your direction, um, it's, it, you know, not that this, they owe us anything, it's, you know, public transportation, I get that, but sort of, um, you know, now would be a really nice time for them to give a little something back so we can at least walk to our open space. I don't know if that's anything you can use, but um, probably not in the department you're talking to with engineers. And it is fortunate that this 30 foot bump out is outside of the hundred, what did you say, 150 feet? 150, right. Yeah. And um, that would, that would be great. So you're going to write to them short within the next few weeks, Sam? You well, get the next this few back? days, if I can connect with Lisa and Karen and there's no other problem there and get feedback from you guys. Uh, and Freddie, I actually have included that point in the message that I've drafted, you'll see. Great. And I think you're right. I don't think the engineers will care, but I'd like to get the point there. So um, if they actually open the door to this, then maybe there's an opportunity to get Carolyn Dykma involved again to suggest that kind of thing from her perspective. And she seems to have some influence with them, which is great. So, do you know? Do you know when the road, the bridge construction is due to stop? I know they're moving on to um, Parkerville. That's yeah, a whole eight, other neighborhood that's going eight, to be freaking out. I think eight weeks. I think it's through August, roughly. So it'd be kind of good to get, you know, keep this moving during this construction yep. time because yep. um, not that it. Yeah. it not that one is directly related to the other, but it certainly doesn't hurt in my mind. Um, right. The, so there's that. And then um, if we never want to shut the door on it, but if it looks like the sooner we know if it's not going to move forward, then um, the Open Space Commission, I'm sure Conservation Commission, who won't, who's under the care and control it is, um, is interested as well to know we need to start thinking about other options for access and that would be probably looking at going in front of the selectmen again to discuss that because for public access as well as the um, herbicide we have been to this point had a an abutter allow us to access property the property through their yards I'm not that comfortable asking for that with an herbicide treatment company, you know, carrying chemicals across people's yards. If there's an accident. I mean, they, anyone we hire has to have a million dollars insurance, but I just think that gets way too tricky than just going in and doing a survey, say like we had done before for um, the, not a survey, but the assessors and also for the, um, and I'm saying assessors, I don't mean that. I mean, um, appraisals we've had appraisals done and then to do the baseline documentation i think that's how they got in but um i wouldn't you know carrying any kind of equipment or chemicals certainly you wouldn't want to go through someone's private yard um so but we do have the public access through hubley lane which is a whole nother issue um which would be my last choice personally and Have Freddie, yeah. Uh, one other point that I was trying to think of, you know, how this might play out. And uh, in a perfect world, MassDOT says, yep, uh, we'll give you the access easement and we will build the new fence. There's like I think, 530 feet, I calculated, of new fence parallel to the existing fence that would be required there. Um, and we'll build a fence. And uh, if something like that happens, they're, they're going to want a survey, I'm sure. So to me, the you know, the worst case is that they would say, we'll do it. Actually, worst case is, let's say, no deal. Next worst is, uh, we'll do it, but uh, the town has to have the property surveyed and uh, pay for the cost of uh, 
adjusting the current fence, creating two openings in the current fence and then building a new fence there parallel to the pike. I don't know what that would cost, but at least that would give us a baseline to look at in terms of figuring out, uh, is it something so we could do? The, um, concern I have now about that is we just passed a, a CPA article for a small fence on DCR land. Yeah, that, that's not really comparable because that was protecting MWRA infrastructure. Yeah. So that was relatively expensive fence with uh, you know, barbed wire on top of it and so forth and taller uh, eight foot fence, I think it was. The current fence out there is like six feet of looks like very standard chain link. So I'm sure it would be more expensive with you know state approved contractors than going to Home Depot and buying your own materials. But I, I gotta believe it would be less than uh, in that okay. particular MWRA thing. However, this is all speculative. I mean, they haven't said anything like this and uh, I'm just trying to think of sort of how it might play out, but hopefully they will say, you know, we'll take care of it for you. Well, when I originally um, brought this up to the, um, I had attended a selectman's meeting where Carolyn and Jamie were looking for input and we had sent to Mark Purple our priorities. And this was our, I think our top priority or one of our tops, which coincided um, uh, with them saying they wanted a selectman to work on it. And you were already interested, Sam. So we said that would be the the best case scenario. Um, our thought had been that as they're over there doing construction and they've got workers on site, it just seemed like why not just put the fence up for us? Um, I know that's a These are very, very different constructors though. The, the guys who bid the bridge project are not the people who would do the fence work, I would guess. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm it's sure. Really right. And it's all what you just said also makes the point. I'm very naive thinking, oh, you got guys working there. They could just put a fence up. It's bid work. You can't change the bid. So but you don't that's know. true. Maybe but there creates opportunity if they're out over there, the engineers from Mass Dot are there, whatever. Who yeah, knows there's openings in the area. You know, they're already getting in and out of that section of the yeah. Mass yeah. Pike. I haven't seen what they're doing at Parkerville, but certainly you can see some, you know, for the um, Oregon Road, Woodland Road intersection there, that bridge under there, um, you know, they've, they've got a whole section of chain link that uh, they're parking vehicles beyond. Right. And so they've opened access for them into that area. Um, right. I don't know what they'll do at Parkerville, but it just seems it could be a potential. And then also after the project started, we first had said, oh, if they could just move the chain link fence over, but then I believe you, myself, and Melissa in a discussion said it makes more sense to put another fence up because the people whose yards are bounded by the chain link now are not likely um, to want opened up to people walking next to the yard. With I mean, they'll, they would prefer a fence, in my mind, you know, keeping people walking into the, the property from their yards, right. if that makes sense. a corridor there to yeah. in terms of what the pathway is. So we thought, oh, just move the fence over, but it, that's not an option, I don't think. And that's in the current draft that I'm going to send you. Okay, great. So, again, so we're going to... It's um, hard to ask, and again, no promises from anybody on this, but if you don't ask, nothing's going to happen. So okay, we'll I need to, Sam... If you can follow up with that, I have a member who has to leave. We miscommunicated. We thought it was over at one. Um, let me just look at the agenda if there's anything we have to hit before we end, okay? Nope. I'm all set, um, Freddie. Thanks very much. Thank you. Appropriately. Um, you guys, the rest of the agenda, we can just table because Karen did need to leave at one and it's 109. I don't see anything that's critical there. Right. I just had it in my calendar to only till one here. I might have promised you things I didn't follow through on my promise. Sorry. Um, I might have said till one. So we can hit this another time because we're going to need another meeting at some point. That's good. Okay. Is that all right? Yes, that sounds good. 
All right, Sarah, you are set yep. with anything else? All set. So for the minutes, Karen, just say table the rest of the agenda after the after the Halloran discussion. All right. That sounds good. We got the most important thing, the signature and then the library. So and I know it's urgent for you to get a copy of these minutes. So I'm going to send them as soon as the meeting is over. All right. And then I'll set up a time to go and get your signatures on that form. That sounds good. All right. Thank you very much. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 110. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. All in favor, Karen? Karen Spickoach in favor. Sarah? Sarah Rossitano in favor. Freddie Gillespie in favor. Bye, everyone. And we thank Sam Bye. and Janet for attending. Thanks, everybody.